Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge T110 2 server memory upgrades and how to properly load, configure, and install the system. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge T110 2. Uh, do us a favor, if you find anything useful in today's video, click the like and smash that subscribe. Well, hey, let's get started. Uh, first things first, there is one CPU socket inside. It utilizes a number of different CPUs. The one that we recommend is uh, the Intel E3 1200 V1 or V2 series processor, but it also takes uh, Intel Celeron G400 or G500 series processors, and it also takes Intel Pentium G600 or G800 series processors. So yeah, there's a ton of different procs that you can use, and the uh, socket is an LGA1155 socket. Um, anyhow, now that we know a little bit about the uh, CPUs, let's talk about the RAM. Uh, it takes DDR3 memory. There are four DIMM slots inside. It takes a couple of different sizes. You can use a 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig, or all the way up to an 8 gig. Unfortunately, no, there are no 16 gig DIMM modules that will work for this system. There's a couple of different speeds you can use. You can go as uh, low as 1066, 1333, 1600, or all the way up to 1866. I will uh, let you know in advance if you do get the 1600 or the 1866, it will clock down to 1333. So if there's a higher cost associated with those modules, then I recommend just going with the 1333 because you won't get any extra boost in performance out of them or a higher actual speed. Um, as far as the type of memory you can use, there's really only one type of memory, and that is ECC unbuffered, which is your traditional server UDIM, not a desktop UDIM. Uh, so it does not accept uh, non-ECC unbuffered, just uh, ECC unbuffered. Um, and as far as the max is con uh, concerned, you can get a total of 32 gigabytes using four 8 gigs at 1866 megahertz. So now that we know a little bit more about the machine, let's go ahead and open it up and uh, show you a little bit about the channels and how to physically install the DIMMs. But before we do, I'm going to grab my ESD gear. Really, you never want to be inside your machine without some sort of protection or you can, uh, potentially give it a little bit of a shock. Um, so if you don't have ESD um, at home and you're just using this as a, a office uh, desktop or using this as a gaming PC, completely understand that. So here's what I recommend. Uh, do two different things. One, uh, try not to work on it on top of carpet, uh, especially the old school shaggy carpet. Um, if you're working on top of, uh, top of carpet, your, your chances of uh, shocking it go uh, exponentially higher. And I also recommend if you have a, a piece of copper or something laying around, some type of uh, metal, that, metal that you can grab, it'll actually help to uh, dissipate some of the ESD that's on your hands so that when you're inside of it, uh, it'll actually be just a little bit safer. So those are the two things I recommend if you're doing this at home. So anyhow, I'm going to grab my gear and I'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. Uh, this is one of the things that's very similar between the T110 and the T110 II. Uh, there's a latch on the top as opposed to on the side, like a lot of uh, desktops. Um, and also on that note, if you're interested to know just a little bit more about the T110, uh, here's a link uh, right here to the um, uh, to the video that we have on that, just so you can learn a little bit about the differences. And the main differences are really just the CPUs. Uh, the RAM is actually the exact same, and both of them go up to 32 gigs max. So anyhow, uh, you just want to take this latch, you're going to pop it back, and when you do, this top right here will open up. Okay, and I'm going to show you this from a different view as well. All right, so we've switched the angle. You're just going to pull the latch and lift the top up. As you can see, it's very simple. And once you'll get in, you'll notice um, there are two pieces that you're going to have to move, uh, remove to get uh, physically get into the CPUs and the RAM. So the first thing is this piece right here. You'll see there's a little blue tab. You just squeeze it in, and it'll come straight up. And then there's also this nice big air baffle right here. And for the air baffle, I'll note there's uh, two pegs back here and two pegs down here. And that's how it, where the air baffle physically sits. So you just want to lift it straight up and put it to the side. Uh, you'll notice there is one CPU and four memory uh, DIMM slots. Um, and similar to the uh, T110, and I don't know why I think this is so funny, but I just think this heat sink, I always kind of laugh uh, when I see all the different various types of heat sinks that are on top of the, uh, the CPU. Because, you know, these different designers out there get a hold of them and they want to make it look as cool as they can. So this one has a nice big dip down the middle. Uh, it actually looks pretty cool, but I always just find it kind of funny, the different things that people come up with. So uh, anyhow, that being said, there are, as we said, four DIMM slots. Uh, there are two memory channels. And inside the memory channels, there are two DIMM slots per channel. Um, and in order to uh, kind of notice the uh, the memory channels, um, one, I also should note uh, on the uh, the top that we took out over here, um, if you look, 
Uh, there are some helpful guides, and in particular right here, this is uh, where the channels are labeled. Um, so if you're at home after this video and you're trying to figure it out, it does say it right here on the inside of your system. So I did want to note that. Uh, so if you're at home, uh, you do have some, some physical help there. Uh, but I'll point it out as well, uh, the channels, the start of channel one is the white dim slot right there, and that is dim slot one. The start of the next channel, channel two, is dim slot two is the other white dim slot. So if you were only putting in two memory modules, um, which I would try to recommend and talk you out of it, but I try to recommend for you to put in four, but if you were putting in two, the best way to do it is to put it in the two white dim slot two white dim slots, skip the two black dim slots, and people ask why or what's the purpose of this? Well really it's, it's pretty simple, you want to maximize your overall performance, so you don't want one memory channel uh, taking on the whole load, you want to have a nice even distribution where both channels are doing um, an even split of, of the work, otherwise one is overloaded, one is doing nothing, um, and if one gets completely maxed out, uh, then you basically are, are wasting your overall performance. So uh, really it's just a simple thing about performance. So uh, anyhow, now we're going to go ahead and get this thing uh, started and go ahead and load it up. Uh, one thing I would like to know is I always personally like to open up all the tabs before I get in. just makes it a little bit easier once I'm in there so I'm not fumbling around. And I will note, you'll notice right here on the module itself, there is a little notch in the, uh, and I don't want to stay in the middle because it's slightly off, but there's a little notch here, and that notch is known as a key. And that key is very important because it prevents users from one, putting in the wrong type of memory, but it also is how you properly line up the module because the notch is not in the, in the middle, it's off just a little bit, and there's a, uh, if you can see it's kind of probably tough on the video, uh, but there is a, a, a plastic piece that sticks up on the dim slot, and that's where the notch physically goes. So you have to line it up perfectly. So if if you have it flipped the wrong way and you put it in the wrong way, you could potentially damage the leads or damage the dim slot, which would make basically the, the motherboard broken and you have to buy a new motherboard. So none of these things anyone wants. So just simply lining it up properly. So we're going to go ahead and install it in dim slot one, just in case there's anyone at home who is only doing two dims. So we'll put the first two. And actually, before I fully put it in, um, I wanted to note, you'll see, uh, I'm not touching the module right now. Uh, the module is uh, sitting there by itself, uh, but the module is actually not fully seated. And this is a very common error that we see all the time where a customer thinks that they have a, a broken module or a faulty module, and instead the module is actually just not properly seated. So you want to hear this click right here, so listen for this click. Okay, and you hear and you hear it on both sides. This side was kind of quiet, um, but those two clicks uh, basically lets you know that the the tab has clicked into the side right here, and it pulls the module down enough that the leads actually are getting red inside the dim slot. So uh, it's very important. Uh, because it's very easy to to make that mistake uh, and I don't care if you've been a technician for 20 years or this is your first time on the job uh, or the first time upgrading um, it's a really easy mistake to make uh, we've all done it I did it actually last week when we were doing some videos on some uh, some HP systems so like I said it's an easy thing to do um, and if you're at home don't let that concern you it's very easy to fix um, and, if, and that's another thing I want to point out because a lot of people are at home using this as a gaming um, a gaming PC or as an office desktop. Um, if you're trying to do this yourself and you don't want to have to bring in a technician to help you, uh, it is actually a very easy process overall. So yes, you can do it. You can use videos like this on YouTube which make it uh, very easy to, to upgrade your system. So I would always encourage people to, uh, to at least give it a shot. It's really not that hard. So uh, anyhow, just in a matter of you know about a minute, you can really install the whole system and it, it's really just that easy. And this last one is actually not fully unseated. It's not wanting to go fully in. All right, there we go. Cool. So just like that, um, you can max it out at 32 gigabytes. Um, and really, this this one thing I say, if you're using this at home um, and you currently have, let's just say, you know, maybe 16 gigs inside, and you're looking for a boost in performance so that you can get another couple years out of this, that's honestly the best band aid that you can do is is upgrading your memory. It, it really just it goes so far for helping your overall performance, especially for things like running the internet. Uh, it, it's just the, the easiest and best thing to do. So uh, anyhow, that being said, just want to say thanks for stopping by. If you need any upgrades yourself, uh, do us a favor and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. We'd love to help you out. And hey, if you made it this far in the video, do us a favor. Click that like and smash that subscribe. Thanks for stopping by and take care.